everybody, Boom Slang here. Welcome to my channel. Let me give it a minute, let some people um, file into the stream here, join us, and uh, then we'll go from there. So as you can see in front of you, uh, there's some 800 count boxes. They all have uh, 89 FLIR in them. And so we're going to go through those and we're going to see if we got the um, Billy Ripken um, F-Face card or any variation thereof in these boxes. These boxes came from um, the Morristown lot, my boss, who I picked up from uh, this past weekend. Hey, Bibby, thanks for stopping by. Steve Rodemacher, thank you for stopping by. Also, guys, I'm going to talk about Richie Allen passed away today. Those of you who don't know Richie Allen, um, he started, he broke into baseball in like 1963. Um, he won the American League Rookie of the Year that year. That is rookie year. It might have been 64, 63, 64. But uh, he won the Rookie of the Year. And um, he hit 29 home runs, 91 RBIs, uh, all that while being 5'11", 187 pounds. And he swung a 40-ounce bat. One of the biggest bats in baseball, not the biggest, not one of the heaviest bats in baseball, or not the heaviest bat in baseball, but one of the heaviest. He started his rookie season swinging a 40-ounce bat. He moved up to a 42-ounce bat later on. So, uh, let's see. What else did Richie Allen do? I think he won an MVP as well later in his career. Let's see what it says on Richie Allen. Richie Allen played for for 15 seasons. Um, for like the White Sox, the Phillies, the Cardinals. Um, and there may have been a couple other teams in there. I'm not sure. But he played for 15 seasons. And he did win an AL MVP along with the um, uh, National League. Um, I'm going to earn him NL R National League Rookie of the Year in 1964. So, just goes to prove you don't have to be a big guy like Mark McGuire, six foot five, two fifty, to hit home runs um, and win those uh, kind of accolades. Um, Richie Allen did it at five eleven and one hundred eighty seven pounds. So, um, he you, passed away today. Are you who? Richie Allen. I'm fitting a lot. Oh, you know. I'm not sitting here talking to myself, just hearing myself talk. Edit that. Now, you can't edit, it's live. So anyway, Richie Allen. That was my wife, by the way, coming in, thinking I'm just standing here talking to myself, and she should know better. So now we got, we got these four boxes of 1989 tops. That came in the Morristown lot, uh, which I picked up for free from my boss. And then there was also this box of 1984 FLIR. Um, and that was in there also. There you go, baby. You got moderator privileges now. So you can go ahead and feel free to link your YouTube channel if you have one. And um, people can subscribe to your channel uh, without having to really hunt you down. Uh, so let's move these out of the way because we're talking about Richie Allen first. And it's probably more important than anything else than looking at new stuff. Um, and you're probably going to see a lot of tributes to him today or within the next week. Uh, people talking about him. Um, let's do this. See if I can get this elevated a little bit, maybe. So this is a book that I that I got um, put together, and you see this is my Mickey Mantle uh, Sports Illustrated book. Uh, Dave M just did a uh, a video where he showed his his book as well. Uh, the last article 
of uh, Mickey Mantle. And let's see, I'm right here. So I've met Richie Allen a couple times. Usually at card shows like this one here at the Showboat in Las Vegas. Uh, it was November of 1992. Richie Allen was there. Uh, I was the first one in line to get his autograph. I didn't have anything. I mean, I did. I had cards and stuff for him to sign, too. But um, maybe at this time, I didn't get any cards signed. So I had this the, the little brochure that they hand out for the show. And here's this little certificate of authenticity. Lee Samuels. And the certificate number is number one. First in line to get Richie Allen's autograph. Pretty cool. Again, if you guys didn't know, I didn't know until I just turned on my computer that he passed away today, December 7th. I don't think I have anything else Richie Allen in here. No. I have baseball cards. He had, I had, he had an autograph for me as well, but... Nothing else, Richie Allen. So that was Richie Allen from this autograph binder. And so now let's get into the cards. Check the chat first because that's what we should be doing. Check in the chat. Hello, uh, let me. Here we go. Volumes down. Channels up. Boom. And there we go. We can see the chat. Got my glasses on. Dick Allen and Richie Allen are two different players. Some people think they are the same player. Well, no, they are the same player. Dick Allen is Richie Allen. And it's R-I-C-H-I-E, not R-I-T. So unless there's another Richie Allen that we don't know about, um, I know there's a there's a two different Frank Thomases, um, but Dick Allen and Richie Allen are the are the same person, as far as I know. Hey Wayne, how's it going? Um, so anyway, the Richie Allen that I'm talking about is the one who started out um, White Sox, Phillies, Cardinals, stuff like that, and played for 15 years. He passed away. So, some people call him Dick Allen. Some people call him Richie. All right. So, let's go through these boxes now and just see what we got in here. Uh, again, these are from the Morristown lot that my boss gave me. These are 1984 Fleer. Let's see what's in here. Let's see if anything good, man. That's been in there a long time. It's all wedged up. This paper towel looks like a block of wood. All right, here we go. I don't know what kind of order these are going to be in or even what condition. As you guys see them is as I'm seeing them um, for the first time. Got so many cards to go through that I don't know when I'm ever going to get around to doing them all now. And I got more stuff in the works, guys. I got um, Sunday, I got another deal going down for actually two cases of cards. Um, two cases of 88 rack packs. And there'll be a video about that coming up. I split it with a buddy at work. Um, he said he wanted to get back into cards, so I'm like, all right, well, here, let's. this is for sale. It's a local pickup. Let's go do it. So I don't know what errors there are in this year. I haven't taken the time to look. We're just looking. By the way, this set is very hard to uh, get in good shape. It's very expensive, I should say, if you want to get the set in good shape. Bill Madlock. There's Dave Parker. I 
There's Gary Carter. So we got one Hall of Famer. Hey, Mount Grill, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Email day video from Steve. There you go. Got to finish up the boys' dinner. Catch you later. Okay. Catch you later, Wayne. Kent Ticulvi. Yes. He was there. He was past his card. Teddy Francona. Al Oliver. Kurt Bavakwa. Bobby Brown. There's Steve Garvey signing a ball for some lucky fan. Nowadays, that signature is going to cost you a minimum 20 bucks. Hey, we got the Tony Gwynn. Very nice. Gwynn, second year. Two Hall of Famers. Dragon fan Tim. No errors in this set. Well, there you have it. Good thing I wasn't wasting my time looking for any errors. So, I, I met up with this guy um, that I bought those two boxes of 87 um, cellos off of. And he was telling me he used to work for the um, Camden River Sharks. This is a minor league team. I think they're an independent league. Um, they're no longer in existence. They relocated. Team moved out of moved out of Camden, New Jersey, and relocated. Well, he told me while he was working there, um, Roger Clemens came through. I guess his kid was in town to play a game or something like that. And uh, Roger Clements was coming in and that um, if anyone wanted autographs to get all the stuff together, they'd put it in a room and Roger would do a private signing. He wouldn't meet anyone. He wouldn't answer questions. He wouldn't talk to people. And uh, <laughs> he said he was told, and this guy sees like the accountant or something like that. He, did, he was a money guy for the club. And he, he said that everyone was told if anyone talks to Roger and brings up steroids or anything along that line, that they would be fired immediately. <laughs> so needless to say, he said um, Roger went into the room, was in there signing everything, and he signed everything. Johnny Bench. Um, he came out of the room. He just kind of did... One of these, hey, walking away and just waving, smiling, and just pew, gone. Didn't exchange anything other than a wave and a goodbye. But no one got fired that day. So, again, for you guys that have got here a little late, Richie Allen passed away today. Dick Allen, Richie Allen. 15-year um, career, he got National League Rookie of the Year, and he won an American League MVP. Okay, you got to meet Roger Clemens. That's cool. I bet you know I brought up roids. And this that was pre roid era. Yeah, that's fine, Bobby. So 
Claire normally puts their, you know, their, their cards in numerical order, so. Um, but these are not in any numerical order. They're hodgepodge in there. By team, it looks like, but not numerical. Tugger McGraw. Joe Morgan. There you go. Another Hall of Famer. Tony Perez, Hall of Famer. Where's the Pete Rose? There it is. There's the Pete Rose. Not a Hall of Famer, but... Let's see. Where's Lefty? No Lefty. No Carlton. No Schmidt. Carlton might have been on the... It's only 84. Carlton was still there. Anyway. Hey, Goody G. How's it going? Yeah, man. He might one day, man. I don't know. Rod Carew, Hall of Famer. Very nice. Out the Belly and Owens, World Series, 1983. And now the checklist. They don't have managers on. There's Tony La Rosa. Smiling Sparky Anderson. Tommy Lasorda. Billy Martin. I love Billy Martin. Bobby Cox, Hall of Fame manager. Joe Torrey, Hall of Famer. Dick Williams is a Hall of Fame manager. Whatever focus is there, it is. Whitey Herzog, Hall of Famer. Did you get my uh, email about the manager cards? I did. I did. But I also swung by the post office today. It's going to take me a while to get manager cards together like a nice big stack. I don't want to just trickle one or two of them at you. I'm going to get like try to get like the 87 set of managers, you know, and go from there, you know, just so. And I went by the post office and it's just line is out the door. I mean, I'm like, what is going on, people? And then it hits me. Well, I guess people are mailing out their holiday gifts. I don't know. But I did get your, um, I did get your email, and um, but I got to get set up and I got to get prepared for that. So, Clemens Bonds Rose will be in the Hall of, in the other Hall of Fame, the Hall of Shame. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the Houston Astros should have given up their rings, vacated the title, 2017. But, nope, and now look at both the managers are back. Back in the major leagues, managing none of the players. who they had to sit out a COVID season, 60-game penalty. Oh, my God. Which you call, uh, Robinson Cano just got a whole season ban for all of next year. If it's a full season, he got the ban. Manny Ramirez served 50 game bans and, and even longer for cheating the game. All right. So, you know. I don't even watch baseball anymore. There's Steve Garvey. Superstar special. Steve Garvey. National League Iron Man. With the Popeye forearms. Rod Crew. AL batting runner up. And there he is with the batting champ, Wade Boggs. Very nice. How about Tim Raines? Letting go of the Raines and... Double Trouble, Al Oliver. Sacks and Thon. Okay, all-star second baseman. 
There's Quisenberry and El, uh, no, that's Tippy Martinez, not El Presidente. That's the other Martinez. Quisenberry. There you go. Pres Rose and Morgan. And on the on the Dunruss card, it's called Triple Threats, right? Very nice. Reunited in Philly. How about there? There's two Hall of Famers right there. Brett and Perry. Check that pine tar. Look where it is. Look where it is, George. We caught you in the act. Cheating. There's two more Hall of Famers. Yaz and Bench. Very nice. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? Thanks for stopping by. So, um, again, for you guys who are getting here late, Richie Allen passed away today. I don't know how many know about it, but I just saw it in the news. 15-year career, uh, National League uh, Rookie of the Year, and won American League uh, MVP title during that 15-year career. Three Over 300 home runs, and the guy in his rookie season swung a 40-ounce 40, 40 bat. He went up. I, I'm trying to think that he used a 44 ounce bat at one point in his career, but I was only able to find where he went to from a 40 to a 42 ounce bat. But I think uh, he was as high as 44 ounces, but not 100% on that. And the guy was 5'11. He wasn't six foot five. McGuire build. And these boxes we're going through here tonight are from the Morristown lot. There's Quisenberry with a, I don't know, kind of a shit eating grin on his face. I don't know what he's thinking there. <laughs> don't know. Johnny Wathen in his catching gear. First base catching. Very nice. Frank White. <laughs> you didn't hear that? Hey, Jason. How's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Yes, the rather diminutive Allen, who was 5'11", 187 pounds, used this 40 ounce. There you go. That's exactly what I read that article right there. That's where I got it from. Twenty-nine home runs. Kirk Gibson. Whitaker. Steve Howe, can you please? That's there's another cheater for you. You got three chances. Fernando Valenzuela. Fado, Mickey Hatcher, B. Brooks, George Foster,
Tommy John. Three pounds, three trunk. Keith Hernandez. Got Tom Terrific. Put that light on him, right? Boom. Very nice. Rusty Staub. Strawberry. Boom. There you go. Top loader. It's got a centering issue, but still. There you go. Strawberry, we'll put that there. No, it's not the whole set. Not the whole set. We've already come across like cards that are missing. Should I? Uh, should there have been a Cal Ripken in here? There was no Cal Ripken Jr. Um, but that's Dale Murphy. I don't know if Ripken had an 84 Fleer or not. He did, right? He almost had to. No Yount. No Molitor. No. There's a lot of cards that are missing. But no Carlton, um, you know, no, no uh, Steve Carlton, no. Uh, we did have the Pete Rose, though, so that wasn't bad. So not bad. That's for that one. Put these back in the box carefully. So, Jeff, like I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm going to meet a guy over in the um, parking lot. Of the uh, stadium Sunday 10 o'clock and I'm gonna buy two cases of 88 tops off of him I'm getting them for $60 a case now the cases are rack packs though they're not you know waxed they're rack packs so there's only three boxes per case but it's $60 for the case it's $20 a box if, if I was a flipper, I could flip them for more than that. You know. But I'm going. Uh, there's another guy at work who wanted to uh, go in on it. So I'm like, all right. Because he said he wanted to get back into collecting too. I'm like, all right. Then let's do this deal right here. So. Facebook Marketplace, guys. Keep an eye on it in your area. I don't know where uh, Alex is. By the way, guys, I'm up to 870 uh, subscribers. Holy cow! That's a new, that's a new record channel there. Channel record. Maybe I'm dyslexic. All right, so now we're going to the. I have four four of these boxes of 89 Fleer. We're going to go through them. and We're going to see if we have the Billy Ripken. I'm sure we do. I'm hoping we do. The question is. Uh, the question is, is which one is it if we have one? I mean, these boxes are pretty full. It's pretty near complete. Probably is complete, minus the the um, the stickers. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time. We're going to try to cut right to the um, 
Orioles team. I don't know what number he is. There's Barry, Barry Bonds. So that tells me everything is here. Sabo. We are looking at the bombs. Donnie Baseball. In F face. They put them in alphabetical order too. So, ooh, oh, there. I'm saying like, I didn't see a Ryan, and there was a Scott before Ryan. Sixty-seven and sixty-eight. So. Uh, not quite alphabetical order because there's a 367 and Ryan is 368. So, yes, I'm getting another alphabet. So, let's see if we got the um, Randy Johnson. There it is, Randy Johnson. Total blackout. in a top loader. Albanes. Oh, there's the junior. Wait a minute. There it is, Ken Griffey Jr. Very nice. Edgar. Ah, there's the there's the Orioles. All right, let's see. And Murray. Oh, I flipped it. You guys see it. You've seen it probably before I did. Wow, it's pretty far away. So there's the Ripken. It's not a saw cut. So what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Black box. And there's Cal. All right, so we got a black box here. Very nice. And it looks like it is a complete set, which is nice. So that's one down. Got three more to go. So look at the price. They're commons. Black boxes, all black boxes. All right, so that's that one. Let's get 
this other one here. Now we know it's right in the back. So. There it is, I think. Yep. These are upside down, but... All right, which one is this going to be? There's Billy Ripkin. What's it going to be, boys? What's it going to be? Black box. Bummer. All right, two black boxes. Well, well you know, they're probably all going to be black boxes now because the guy probably bought them all the same. Let's see what the other... We want to see what the Johnson looks like, right? The Randy Johnson card. There's Griffey Jr.'s. Nice. Goose! Johnson, blackout. Another black box. So I'm going to go with that's a complete set without looking any further. Let's get into the next one. Got two left. I have to slide these over though. What I can't, I forgot to look. There is, there's an error in this one. There's a couple errors in this one, but the treadway with the bullseye above his head, this one is not the error. I don't have one of them yet. I'm going to keep looking though. The Heath and the um, Brookings have an error. They have backs are swapped, but these are correct. That's the right back with the right front. Um, as far as Boston goes, that's the Romine error card. That is not um, Kevin Romine. All right. So that's it. We got at least one error here. Brookins, um, Paul Gibson. If it wasn't it wasn't it Paul Gibson was the score one with the guy grabbing his crutch. All right, here we go. 
Johnson blackout. All right. Now let's get right to the Ripken. There's their junior. Griffey Jr. No? Okay. Glavin, by the way. We've been overlooking the Glavin, the Braves. Yes. All right. Here we go. Cal Ripken, so Billy's in front. It's going to be a black box. I know it. Yep. All right. Three for three on the black boxes. All right. We got one box left to look for. The Ripken F face, which we're not going to find. All right, here we go. That's the front. Kirby. There's the Brookins. Nope. Right back. Right back. All right, Randy Johnson's on the back. Ooh, it's got slightly, you can see some orange in there. So this is a version, uh, a different version of the card. I've seen with orange, I've seen them with green and the total blackout. And I've never seen the one with the whole Marlboro sign in the background. But that's close. I mean, you can see Marlboro, that's what that says. That's the whole top of the, like the box lid. With the red top. And there's a little white there from the, the part of their logo. And then it says Marlboro. Right on the top. Cigarettes of Champions, baby. Just kidding. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Um, yeah, that's, uh, those 88 rack packs I'm picking up, uh, Sunday. It's actually, uh, two cases, like I said, but, uh, one case is going to a coworker who wanted to get in on it. So for $60 for three boxes of rack packs, fresh out of the case, still in the case, as a matter of fact. There's the junior card again. And I 
All right. Billy Repkins coming up. Black box. Four black boxes today. Oh, well. Yes, what it is. You don't always get the F face card. But we got four black boxes. And, you know, the price is right on those. You can't beat free. Complete sets, four of them. I don't know if we have any other big, like big searches out of those boxes out there in the garage that I just picked up from the Morristown lot, we're calling it. But got a ton of tops. boxes, which I'm assuming some of them are going to be complete sets. Some of them won't be. My boss said he took out what he wanted and left the rest. And he doesn't do a whole lot of other sets or other cards. He's, his thing is I think 83 Fleer. He's working on right now completing the 83 Fleer set. TTM in that set. Um, those that are still alive. Um, my boss has over 9,000 autographs in his collection from TTMing. He does uh, about 10 a day, he says he sends out. Some days less, but usually he sends out 10 a day and then just lets them trickle back in. He and I are both members of um, sportscollectors.net, which is a... Uh, the pay, pay site, you pay, it's like $15 a year. And um, you get access to the addresses of these players with the success and failure rates, all that good stuff. Um, and people buy and sell on there. It's strictly a TTM and thing. And I'm thinking there's other people in the community that are a member of that site as well, the TTMers. So we went through the 84s, picked out our Hall of Famers and um, fan favorites that were left in 84. Now, he may have picked that 84 set apart because there was a lot of stuff missing from there. But I think he does 83, but he may be doing 84s as well because there wasn't a whole lot of 84s left. That good boss. Yes, he is a good boss. And yes, they are um, They are kind of hiring. They just did a whole bunch of hirings. But I heard they're going to reopen the hiring. Because uh, I'm trying to get my son in there. But I don't know if he wants to actually work there. So guys, while I have this out, I might as well share this with you guys. I know I've put, put this out here before uh, to share with you guys in the past. But some of you guys are new. You may not have seen this binder here. And I'm getting a very bad glare. That stinks. But anyway, the top one here, you can see, if this camera stops shaking, is Bob Feller. And he's at Cooperstown giving his address. It says Hall of Fame, um, something in a museum. Um, so, and that's a, a photograph that someone took, obviously. And um, I got this when I went to a card auction about two years ago now. Um, and it was in a box and a lot that I bought. It was like a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm like, I didn't know it was in there either because it was just a whole bunch of stuff. It was laying in the bottom of this box. And I'm like, ooh, is that a real autograph on there? And I think it is. I think it's legit. Uh, let's see what else I got in here. If you guys watch Dave M., his video from yesterday, he has um, this exact Sports Illustrated of Mickey Mantle. Um, the last copy. All the notifications have been building up. There we go. All right. So.
this is my certificate of authenticity that went with my Maury Wills uh, relic card that I have. That I have. Nobody signed that. Dick Buckus didn't sign that. Walter Payton didn't sign that. It was just that I sent away as as a kid. I sent away to a lot of teams, and back then I was doing, you know, football, basketball, hockey, baseball. So I was sending off to the teams. Um, my father-in-law got me this one while I was uh, overseas. Um, I was in the Air Force for twenty-one and a half years, but it was it's signed by Chuck Bednarik who was the last, you know, two-way player. And it just says uh, Eagles 1949 to 62 pro uh, hall of fame in 1967. Now he's not in the photo anywhere. Just that Chuck Bednarik was somewhere and he was signing autographs. So pretty cool. Even personalized it to me. My all in all uh, was pretty thoughtful that way. And of course, I did, you know, the Eagles guys because I'm from that area. Here's uh, Bill Berge. Signed this one, number 66, Bill Berge. Met him at a car dealership. Then, lo and behold, I think he has his own. After retiring, he started his own line of car dealerships. Um, this is my Joe Montana. It's a little hard to see, but he signed it right across his jersey here. And I also sent a card with. With my request, he sent this back, and he signed my card, and my card is certified through uh, PSA as legit, which was nice. Um, again, some of you guys may not know all these guys. Um, Wilbert Montgomery for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, running back. Um, Tony Franklin, call him Twinkle Toes. Go figure. Uh, this is Mike Schmidt. I sent that. It took me three years to get this back from him. Um, sent it. I mean, it looks legit. I've seen a lot of stuff like this on eBay. Exact same. Exact same. Except without the card. I always sent a card. And whatever came back, came back. Some things never came back. Um, but he signed my card. And he signed a little letter. Now, I've seen these form letters before. Where, like, the third paragraph is different. Depending on... The time of year or the year they'll talk about like this will happen to be in 1986 we have a young and exciting team i'm looking forward to this 1986 baseball season we would all like nothing more than to bring a championship back to philadelphia so in other par other letters the form letters were like same the same slightly different but this like usually the third one is different if you check them check them out on the ebay you'll see them out there it's just usually the third paragraph. Some of them don't even have a third. They only have three. They don't have a fourth. Larry Boa. Fernando Valenzuela signed this. That's the facsimile. He signed it down here for me. To Mickey. Fado Valenzuela. Didn't put Fernando. Put Fado. Uh, Hoyt Wilhelm. Met him at the showboat in 1992. Um, and again, I had cards. But I also have, I tried to get the guys to sign these little flyers because it's dated and all that good stuff. So it kind of, it acts as its own certificate of authenticity. You know what I mean? Ryan Sandberg, Eric Karras was there. I had my kid. I had some pictures taken with my son and Ryan Sandberg. There's my Richie Allen with the certificate of authenticity that goes with this. November 29th, 1992. Some Phillies. Uh, Bob Boone signed that. Uh, a lot of the Eagles would go around. They would play the um, high school faculty, faculties in basketball. This happens to be where my wife went to high school. So uh, we would go there and watch them play the, uh, the local nail sign. They give them the sign. All this stuff is real. We got them signed it after the game. There's no autograph here. It's just a big card, and I didn't have any place else to put it. And they just have the BA rods. This is an artist proof. I got uh, no Ty Cobb, but I got Bill Madlock twice, three times. Ed Ott signed that. Madlock may be signed in there somewhere, too. Yeah, right there it is. Madlock signed there. The back is all fake facsimiles. 
Ed Cranepool, um, Gaylord Parry signed this for me. Postcards. Pretty cool. Steve Garvey, but it was a glossy photo and it all just beaded up. Willie Stargell signed this for me. Steve Carlton, Johnny Bench. Lou Brock. That's a facsimile. That's his real autograph. Um, and then I just put some other Lou Brock stuff in there. Oops, and that just fell over. Tim McCarver, who caught both Steve Carlton during his career and Bob Gibson. Boom. Uh, Brooks Robinson, back when the you know, guys used pen back then. Uh, this is my cousin's kid, uh, Sage Karam, who's a IndyCar driver. He signed a couple things for me. He drove for Lexus for a year and a half or two years for Lexus um, in their rally stuff, wherever they did their road courses. This is where he would gas monkey garage like a couple years ago, sponsored him in the Indy 500. And Wix Filter has been his main um, sponsor lately. Richie Allen. Richie Allen's a, a baseball player who played for the White Sox, the Phillies, the Cardinals, and probably some other teams. Um, and he passed away today. He was uh, 1964. He was the National League Rookie of the Year. And he also won the American League MVP during his career. Here's some, um, no autographs, just some old posters and stuff that these things would come inside packs of cards when you bought them so there's boog pal and they're numbered number one of the set brooks robinson again those are not real autographs they're all facsimile tommy ag carl yastrzemski these are from the Late 60s, I'm thinking, like 68. Sam McDowell. Chico Cardenas. Oops. Get these two apart here. Hall of Famer, Orlando Cepeda. Cleon Jones. Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid. There's one of two there, I think. I get them apart. They have not been out of this binder like this in a long time. There we go. Uh, Bobby Noop. Johnny Callison. Maddie Alou. And someone tore Maddie on the side there. He got a little ripped. Hall of Famer Ron Santo. And then we got some football. These were in like packs of, I think, 1971 or 72 tops. Gene Washington, Andy Russell. And on the back, they, they have a little football. And they had a little card you would, like, uh, you had the playing cards were little, not deckled edge, but they were just like the 68 baseball ones. And then you flip them over and it tell you you got fumbled or you got a 10 yard gain or five yard loss. And that's how you played that game. I've actually played it with my brothers. Let's see. There were some good ones. I, I think I have uh, my, my guy was Joe Namath, Dave Osborne, Bob Greasy, Roman Gabriel, Jerry Levias, Bob Hayes, at one point the fastest man on the planet, Sam Brunelli, Jim Nance, and Bill Nelson. I got a Namath one somewhere. Namath was my guy. As far as football goes. And then we got, they can also come out with bigger posters. Gary Peters, 
again, I don't know what year these were. Um, it doesn't have a year on it. But there was 24 in this set. Nothing on the backs, just blank. And who was this guy? Orlando Cepeda, Hall of Famer. Gotta be careful. I need to really just find something big to open them up and press them and something open instead of keeping them folded. They get creased and they get lines and that's that. Come back in here. All right, Steve Sachs is not a real autograph. That's a facsimile. But I do have um, stuff signed from him. Cards, like I sent him cards, and they sent this back. And he signed the back of the thing. Um, George Foster signed this for me. And Tony Collins signed that for me. I think that I got the Tony Collins during one of their USO tours when they came to Germany and stuff like that. Edwin Moses, the Olympic uh, high heart gold medal high hurdler, came to the base I was at in Germany, and I got him to sign. I went to the library and I ripped these ripped these articles out of the uh, out of the Sports Illustrated magazine, and he also signed a uh, index card for me. Couldn't tell you whose signature that is because it looks like Elmo Vallo signed it. Mark May from the Redskins. Mike Davis from the Raiders. This certificate of authenticity goes with my Ryan Sandberg uh, card. Or so. I think I got a card signed, but the card is in um, uh, protector. Um, Matt Millen signed that for me. Nothing for Ripken. There's Elmo Vallo. Nothing on the uh, Maddox. That's just a big card. I got Bill Russell signed that there for me. Um, Bill Russell signed there. Different years. 175. Nice clean cut Bill Russell. And then... By 83, he's a long-haired hippie. And then these are just some cards. No autographs, I don't think. Yeah, that's it. And then this is my stuff. My father saved these or had these made up for me when I played Little League. That's me, the only one in the, the dark jersey. Everyone else had white jersey. I was like the token guy from my team to get... Uh, to get picked for the uh, all-star team. You know, you got to have representation from every team. Hey, truth be told, how's it going? So I was that guy, but actually I was, I was, I was fast as hell. I was probably the fastest kid in the league. Um, problem is I couldn't hit back then. So I wasn't a very good hitter, but I was still the leadoff guy. I, I never understood that. They put me in leadoff and uh, yeah. Oh, and there's a Duke Schneider puzzle. And that's it for that binder. I know I've showed it before, but some new guys on the channel didn't have never seen it, so now they have. And let's see. Sometimes when you go places, guys, and you get autographs, now we have these new fancy phones. But back then, we didn't. We had, you know, cameras. Get this out of here. There we go. So hard to see. I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna go to just the one. That's Ray Wershing, 49ers. That's um that's his name. He was a 49er as well. That's Mark May. Harmon Killebrew in Las Vegas, mass signing, and that's the card I gave him to sign. I got a picture of him signing. Uh, I believe that's his rookie card. So pretty cool. And then I, that was another one of the test ones that I sent to PSA to see if it would come back as verified, genuine or not. You see uh, Catfish Hunter was there. Doc Ellis was there. Um, Greg Nettles was there. There's Nettles. There's Doc Ellis. 
There's my, that's not my son. That's someone else's kid. But um, Ryan Sandberg signing at a card show in Las Vegas. That's water, not beer, by the way, guys. That's not beer in that picture. He may have had some beers later, but not there. It wasn't beer 30 yet. And that's it. So nowadays we got our, our smartphones and we can take a video, a movie, and that can also act as your certificate of authenticity. So now here it is, guys. I've done that with uh, Pete Rose uh, within the last two years. Um, Jose Canseco. Um, um, what's his name? Hold on. The oldest living MVP. God, he lives right over there on the other side of Philly, too. Um, Bobby Shantz. It's not Shantz. We always say it. Even I was pronouncing it wrong. Um, I played baseball this last year with the guy who would have lunch with Bobby like once a month before this whole COVID thing hit. And he says, uh, Bobby says everyone says his name wrong. He went over to, he went over and had some kind of family get together at Bobby's house. And they're all like Shantz, Shantz. It's Shantz, not Shantz. It's Shantz. It's like French. So next time I see Bobby, I'm going to surprise him and say, I know. I know how to say your last name correctly, Bobby Shantz. And he'll be totally impressed um, if he stays you know, healthy. He's 90-something years old now. Hey, Criterion Racer, how's it going, Kevin Cards? Um, so what we did, quick recap, we went through some 84, um, uh, partial box of 84 clear, picked out some of the um, key cards that were left in the, in, in, the, in the box. We got some Hall of Famers here. Uh, hall, a lot of Hall of Fame managers. But most of the cards were picked out of the box. That's Tony Gwynn's second year. So most of them were gone. Yeah, right? I'm surprised the strawberry was still there. Uh, I got I got like 30,000 cards from my boss for free. These four boxes right here in front of you are complete sets of 89 Fleer with the Billy Ripken black box. Not to scribble out the black box. All four of them. We've got... Um, Three Randy Johnson blackout billboard in the back, and one that's you can see faintly the Marlboro sign in it. There's different versions of that that card. There's a straight up Marlboro. I've seen green. I've seen the orange, which we saw today, and the blackouts. Um, what else? Every card there. Those are complete sets. I'm, su I'm not surprised and surprised at the same time that. They are complete sets, so I can't wait to get into the other ones, but as um, I see them, you guys are going to see them, so I'm not going to go through those. I'm going to go, I went down and I separated them by Tops, Score, Fleer, and Dunruss. There's some more Fleer left, um, I think, one or two. Um, maybe not. Maybe this was all the Fleer. Um, there's like five boxes of Score. There's one box of like 92 Upper Deck. Um, bunch of tops, but you know, all junk wax era stuff. And um, let's see, these are these are two boxes I brought up last night. Um, because I looked in there and they're just hodgepodge, so you get all the different ones in there. So I was going to do a video on them last night, and I just got tired and fell asleep instead. We did something else instead, and this box here looks hodgepodge, right? Oh, semi hodgepodge. It's got some stuff here and um, a hodgepodge mix of looks like there's even hockey in there. So um, it's just a mix of cards in there. Not like a not like a set. So I was going to go through them last night and I ended up just dozing off. So that's it, guys, for today's video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing it with you, um, and we are at an all-time high for the channel. We're at 870 subscribers. We're 130 away from our goal of 1,000 and giving away that 1,000 subscriber giveaway uh, box. It's a huge box. 
Um, check with Mountain Gorilla. He got the 750 subscriber one. Ask him questions about it. He got like four boxes of cards, unopened cards, like wax packs, wax boxes, a whole bunch of, um, you know, like, I think there are 88 or 89 um, folders that a lot of you guys had, uh, from what I understand, a lot of you guys had those when you were kids in school. Um, I came across a bunch of them. There's some Christmas ornaments um, with sports teams. Um, there's, uh, I think this one has a, a miniature Dallas Cowboy football helmet in it, not signed or anything. Just like the, some of this stuff is stuff that I won in like these auctions and the stuff I don't collect. I don't collect football or, or any of that stuff anymore. So all that's, you know, been given away. Um, some of it in this, uh, next giveaway. And I have other stuff that I can give away on the channel later on. I hope so. I hope with the 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 grand opening of my um, YouTube studio and what I'm hoping to to do with that um, will help the channel grow. Like I said, we, I, I fluctuate, guys. Up three, down three. Up three, down three. Up three, down two, you know. Uh, there's one point where I dropped like 30 or 40 subscribers for some reason. You know, and then it took me like a, almost a year to get all of them back. To get back to 750 so we're at 870 and let's just you know fingers crossed everything works out um by the way jeff airtime agreed to be a co-host on my um my uh, upcoming um youtube studio inauguration or christening whatever you going to call it we're going to have some giveaways and stuff like that we're going to try to have fun for at least an hour of fun and just maybe just do giveaways for an hour and not really open up anything. Just kind of give stuff away to people that whoever stop in and, you know, it'll be all like live giveaways, that kind of stuff. I think it's going to be fun and I think it's going to help the channel grow. Uh, I know you guys are going to enjoy it because you're going to see stuff that you've have seen before and that you've never seen before. Or you may have seen one time. So it's going to be fun. And um, it may be a trip down, a little trip down, uh, you know, um, nostalgia lane for you. A little, you know, memory jogger like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, yes. So I'm going to let it at that. Uh, I'm not going to build the uh, thing up way too much because I don't have a date yet. Like I went in and did some more spackling tonight. I was supposed to do sanding last weekend. This past weekend, I didn't do any sanding. Um, so tomorrow, on my way home from work, I got to stop and I got to buy a sander because I can't locate my wife's palm sander. So I got to buy another sander and I got to sand all that down, all the, the spackling and stuff, filling the cracks, the fillers and stuff. I got to patch the one hole in the ceiling yet. And that'll be paint time. And then comes the fine tuning of, um, I'm going to try to get another, another, um, camera of some kind, but that may be down the road. Hey, truth. How's it going? Yes, it was a great, uh, great start to the week. And I hope everyone did have, uh, a fabulous Monday. Everyone except the uh, Richie Allen family, uh, who, Sorry to say, uh, Richie Allen passed away today. So you guys will probably be seeing a lot more tributes to him through other people's channels. I know people like to do that kind of thing. It gives them content. And it also keeps things fresh in everyone's mind that these guys are getting older. The guys from maybe not your childhood, but from your father's childhood. Um, and, um, you know. Um, like I said, I've had the, the opportunity to meet Richie Allen and talk to him, get his autograph, all that good stuff. Shake his hand, you know, all that stuff. That's what's so great about going to these autograph sessions in person that you you get to interact with the player. When you get to see that the human side of them that, you know, even the guys back in the 80s and, and 70s, they didn't make a whole lot of money. There was a few, but not until like, the 90s and, and and up did the guys start making the big money 
you know, Mickey Mantle's largest contract was $100,000. I'm thinking Babe Ruth's largest contract was $100,000. Some guys were just doing it, you know, for a couple thousand dollars a year. Kind of getting minor league pay to play, you know, during the 50s and 60s. You know, getting what a minor leaguer gets today. You know, and that's why a lot of guys didn't play ball. A lot of good guys had to stop playing ball to raise their family because they weren't making any money playing baseball. Or they had to choose a profession, you know, over baseball. They had to do an actual, to do a job. So, um, but um, that's going to be it, guys, for today's video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. Hope to bring you more tomorrow. Um, like I said, I've got... Oh, with this last one, probably 200,000 cards to go through yet that I have not yet sorted. I know the, the Philly lot has a lot of complete sets in it. We've gone through some of them, like the, was it 93 Tops, where we look for all those Jeter cards. Uh, there was a box that had uh, like um, four or five different Jeter cards in just one of these big boxes you know, where everything was thrown in there. We pulled like five Jeter cards out of that. There was three or four sets that I didn't take the Jeters out. I just verified that it was in there. Boom. And then, you know, put it on the shelf. Because I'm also, you know, I'm a set collector. So one day I hope to, I, you know, I, I got away from binders. But I like the way Pepino Man has his setup with the binders, you know, and all that. It looks really nice and organized. So that's something that I'll be doing probably. And making that part of a backdrop for, you know, my videos and stuff like that. Uh, if I can turn around and just talk to you guys, you know, and, you know, just have fun. Have fun doing what we do. I mean, that's what it's all about. I'm also, um, like I said, I started uh, partnering with a, a guy at work uh, on picking up some cards. We we went halvesies on two cases of 1988 tops. The guy had them for $65 a case plus 20 shipping. Uh, I talked him down to $60 a case if I buy both cases and no shipping. I'll go meet him and pick it up because he's kind of local. So we're going to do the exchange right there in the parking lot of, um, of um, either Lincoln Financial Field or, or, or uh, the baseball stadium there for the Phillies. You know what I'm talking about. We're going to do that this Sunday. The one and only Bud Stoney. How's it going? I think everyone's having a good day. That's for sure. I hope everyone's having a good day. I have a, I had a good day. Any day you wake up with, you know, both feet on the ground and not under the ground, you're good. It's a good day. When you get to be a little bit older, you guys will figure that out. Um, so that's it. Um, again, um, Still got a ways to go on the on the studio. I have to buy shelving to put all these cards on, and then I have to decide. Maybe with Jeff's help, we'll decide how we want it, how it could be set up, and to maximize everything. Because I got all these boxes of complete sets, I want to be able to display them. Plus, do binders like one binder of each set, like like I said, like Pepino Man does. It's I like the way his is set up. Again, I'm not too happy with binders, but I think I can live with. Um, binders and so thanks everyone for the thumbs up thanks for commenting thanks for hanging out I appreciate it guys don't forget to check each other's channels out link your uh, you know while you guys are here you can link away you know that right link away your channels to your, your homepage or if you have a buddy a friend that is a, you know, a small channel you want to help them advertise throw their link up here too and have people with an explanation. Hey, this is so and so. Go check him out, guys. He's a good guy. Got great content. That's the only way we're going to help each other grow, guys. I mean, um, YouTube's not going to do it for us. They're not going to help us. We're going to have to grind away at ourselves, you know, by ourselves to get this done. And through everyone in the community's cooperation, like that, like that's what I don't understand is we we know there's like seventy five thousand or eighty thousand people out there because if you go on. You go on Eric Jab's channel, you see how many subscribers he's got. 
So you know there's a lot of people out there. We shouldn't be struggling to get a thousand. We shouldn't be. There's, you know what I'm saying? Like, why is it such a struggle to get to that that first real um, um, you know, achievement for your channel is get a thousand subscribers. Bang, great. You know, everyone puts out great content. Everyone. Everyone's different. Their presentations are different. Their style's different. Their content's different. I don't care if it's football, hockey, basketball, baseball. We should still be, um, you know, helping each other out, subscribing, growing, all that good stuff. So, love what you do, guys. Love the hobby. That's a quote from uh, Pepino Man. All right. So, again, thank you, everyone, for uh, hanging out. Wicked Discounts. How's it going? There we go. I don't know why you had that, why hello was blocked. That was weird. Anyway, guys, I'm done for the night. Um, thirsty. Um, yeah, why is your name blocked? I don't know. I haven't blocked anyone. I've never blocked anyone on this channel. And I don't think anyone, I don't even know how to unblock. Let me see. Because it says wicked discounts. Because of my username. It's like that everywhere. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if I can unblock you. Or someone else can probably unblock you too. Everyone has moderator privileges. No. I don't. It doesn't even give me an option to unblock. I don't understand. Any of you guys, any of you moderators know how to unblock someone's name? It's a YouTube thing. Okay. Because, like, I should be able to click on your, off to the right of your name. It just says moderator. All right. Well, here you go. How about that? I just made you moderator. Now see what happens. Well, now you're not blocked in your wicked discounts because you got a wrench. So you won't be blocked on this channel anymore. All right, so there you go. That's cool. Could be worse. Could be a worse username. Could be Wicked Women or something like that. Wicked Women on Trampolines. <laughs> anyway, so you got here late, late Wicked. Uh, I'm shutting her down, uh, but thanks for stopping by. Um, who doesn't like Wicked Women? Your mom. Ha, ha, ha. Unless your mom was a wicked woman back in the day. Hmm. Anyway. And uh, Jeff Airtime likes... Um, Jeff Airtime likes black boxes, too. So, everyone, make sure you send Jeff a black box. If you send Jeff anything, send it in a black box, because he likes black boxes. Nobody would like your mom. Uh, your dad must have. Your mom... Your grandmother and grandfather must have. He was high, maybe. <laughs> it was two o'clock. It was after two a.m. Right? Bar was closing. All right, guys. Again, thank you everyone for stopping by, hanging out, chit chatting. But I am. Uh, I'm gonna log off here. Um, I don't know what time it is, but it's probably getting late here on the East Coast. Again, we found uh, three black box um, Billy Ripken Jr. Or Billy Ripken, not Junior, but Billy Ripken cards from the 89 Fleer sets. So, well, something nice. Hopefully for you guys tomorrow. All right. Uh, if anyone I promised you mail, like um, uh, ba, 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 Vincicum, Wayne. Uh, I stopped by the post office. The line was out the door. And I'm not going to spend an hour in line or more. I'll have to just go. I'm, I'm going to take off Wednesday. My wife has a doctor's appointment, and I will try to get it done Wednesday. So um, that's all I can say, guys. That's uh, Steve say. All right. Yep, Steve, thank you. Everyone have a good evening, and we'll see you in the next one. This is Boomsang signing out saying peace.
We'll find you, Billy Ripken, F face. Even if it's in. And I moved it. I moved it. I put it away. Yep. Oh, well. I don't know what I did with it. I had those boxes of uh, 89 flare, but that's all right. Good night, guys. Have a good one. See you around. Thanks for the thumbs up, everyone. Appreciate it. Hour and a half almost. That's good. Good timing. We're done in less than an hour and a half. And Steve has check out Steve's uh, check out Steve's mail day video, guys. I'm gonna go there next after I shut this down. All right. My fact, I'm clicking the link now, so it should be. Hopefully, it won't mess up my stream. Leave this site. No, cancel. All right, well, Steve, I'll check you out. I'm going to have to copy it. That's what I'll do, see if I can copy it. All right, there you go. Copy. Now I have it. Now, open up another one. Man, I'm good. Oh, hold up. Go there. Go there. Paste. Boom. Did it work? I don't think it worked there, Steve. Let's go paste here. Let's see if that worked. No video available, it says, Steve. Interesting. Hold on. Let me go back. Still streaming. Still got it. Yeah, why does that say no video available? Copy. Erase that. Paste. It's like it's an incomplete uh, hyperlink or something. All right. Well, I'll find it and I'll check you out there in a in a minute. There, Steve. Appreciate it, guys. Good night, everyone. <laughs>